Hey guys, I'm Lance Cabrera and you're listening to The Guest Series oh. Episode 13, Link Jeans So my vlogs have circled mostly around my course and I think that it has somehow helped some students to consider taking up PS Biology. Plus, I've always wanted to talk to someone who is taking up the same course but in a different school. Now, it is finally going to happen. So BS Biology has been my dream course ever since I was in high school. And now that I'm living the dream, I also think na I may have caged myself in a box of the things I know about the course. But today, we go outside the box and learn more about BS Biology in a different perspective. So here with us today are three outstanding students from Don Honorio Ventura State University in Pampanga to share with us of their experience as biology students. So it is also our first time to actually meet through a call, so let us get to know each other first. You know? So hi everyone, I'm Lance Rafael Cabrera, an incoming fourth year BS Biology major and medical biology student at West Visayas State University. I am your average bio student, like literally in the middle of the class, and I'm also active in student organizations and sports as my main hobby. So now let's meet the first person I met from your school. So I was searching for other bio students, and um, thankfully I, me- I met uh, Miss Patricia Luis Francisco. So hi Patricia, welcome to the vlog. Hi Lance and all our friends. This is Patricia Luis S. Francisco and like Lance here, I am an incoming fourth year uh, BS in Biology student at Don Honorio Ventura State University. And um, there's really nothing interesting about myself but sometimes I do vlogs. Hello, uh, I'm Rydel Juanico, um, incoming fourth year BS Biology student then and Ingat kayin lahat. So, hi everyone. I'm Carl Tagoberi, current uh, governor of the College of Arts and Sciences Student Council and an incoming fourth year student of the Bachelor of Science in Biology of Don Honorio Ventura State University. So, I hope that we will be um, imparting enough knowledge for you to decide whether you will pursue biology or just remain as a valuable organism. Uh, when I met Patricia, it was the time when I was starting to feel COVID symptoms <laughs> a few days before that. And um, actually, their vlogs along with uh, Cedric's Elihio, they were the ones I was watching all throughout the time that I was in isolation. So thank you so much for uh, making me entertained during my isolation. And I'm still in isolation, so I technically still watch your vlogs. No? Um, so before we start, I, know I was really, really excited for this interview because um, this is the first time that I actually met some students who are taking up BS Biology outside of my comfort zone. Zone, which is West Sai State University. So yeah, I'm really, really excited for this episode. So today we connect with bio students and see now we have common grounds and really the, the depth of our understanding of the course. And uh, basically the title of this episode is Link Genes because I believe now although we are from different schools as biology students, we have um, common knowledge and we have a common love for the world of biology. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to start off, my first question is, how is BS Biology in ano, Don Honorio Ventura State University? So what can you say about the program? So may I have Ms. Patricia? Um, BS Bio kasi sa Dove, so I believe bagong course lang to compared sa other programs na in-offer sa school namin. And if I'm not mistaken, second batch pa lang yata kami ng bio students sa Dove. So. Pero yung professors namin, some of them, they say na came up the crop daw ang bio dito. <laughs> BS Bio kasi, um, in general ha, it's like if you really want to achieve something, you also really have to work for it. And in my experience naman, well-rounded yung bio sa Dove. So, ni, ni de develop niya yung critical thinking, analytical, tsaka good communication skills namin mga bio students. But during the face-to-face, I've mentioned this sa vlog ko din na we had lab machines and equipments, pero mostly they were uncalibrated. And we had experience din noon na one microscope is to 8 to 10 people talaga ang magsishare kapag nag-lab. Um, kahit na di kami masyadong equipped sa applied, I I think our professors made sure naman na we are equipped theoretically. Sinabi naman ni Pat yung mga experiences namin sa DAB. So, uh, pinakamaganda lang siguro is yung ano. Tuto kaming maging resourceful kasi nga, syempre, um, kulang yung mga equipment. Yung pagiging resourceful na yun, magagamit na yun kahit anong field pa yung tahakin mo in the future. So, ayun lang para sa akin. 
as what Patricia mentioned, um, the BS Biology program in the university is just new. And if we're going to compare it with West Visayas, I have friends in West Visayas and I know that they are really excelling in the medical field. As we all know, West Visayas is one of the universities in the Philippines that is really um, having the most um, remarkable results in terms of their graduates whether in biology or in medicine to describe a uh, different crowd in the university i would say for starters it's progressing because we're v- very lucky after you couldn't expect too much from a tr- free uh tertiary education diba? as a student we study the same concept we encounter uh, the same structures of organisms we see we perceive and we understand this topic delivered by our instructors or our professors so i think that learning here does not only reflect on the school itself but also to the student because regardless of your institution when you are really for biology biology chooses you Yes, no. I th- also think na uh, yun din, yung biology. If you're into biology, biology also chooses you, no. Like, um, ako personally, I did not actually make the initial cut of West Visayas State University, so I was actually waitlisted. And hindi pa siya yung unang waitlist. I was part of the second waitlist na. So basically, um, the only reason why I was I was able to enter West Visayas State University is ano, mas maraming students na kapasa sa UP, UPV. So yeah, I'm really thankful for the opportunity to be studying in a university na ano na um, biology program has been there for a long time. But at the same time, I also think na hindi lang yun yung basis to be ano to have your school achieve huge ano huge feats. Because I think na as Carl said no, it really reflects the students. Because although uh, sabi natin na mas matagal yung ano yung biology sa school namin somehow. Um, I also think that if we were not studying enough, or we do not have the, uh, ano, we lack the effort to actually learn biology, then we will also not be, ano, productive biology students, and it will not, it will not work. Kaya ano pa yung achievements namin, it will not work if the student doesn't choose to learn. Okay, so now, what pushed you to study BS Biology, and like, um, what do you want to get out of the course? For example, ako, I look forward to proceeding to medicine or taking up. A master's degree to become a professor someday. So, uh, let's have uh, Rydell. Uh, sa totoo lang, at first, hindi talaga siya uh, choice ko. Kung baga, may iba akong mga professor programs na pinag-iisipan before. Pero nung pumunta ako sa Dubs, ayun, nakakita ko ng slot for uh, biology. So, tinake ko siya. So, para sa akin, siguro, kaya ako nakatagal or sabi natin nag-stay. Kasi, andyan na yung, andyan na yung alawak Pwede ng... mong matutunan, matuklasan, ma-discover sa lahat. Um, para sa akin, yung pag-aaral, yun naman talaga yung goal eh, is matuto. Hindi lang basta kumuha ng, ng diploma. Yung matuto ka talaga ng iba't ibang bagay. So, para sa akin, tinake advantage ko yung biologist. Kasi marami kang matututunan. Kung baga, ikaw mismo, pwede ka pang mag-explore beyond ng pinag-aaralan nyo sa loob ng silid-aralan nyo. So, yun para sa akin yung pinakamagandang bagay. Kaya siguro napili ko yung biology. And sa future, siguro, pinag-iisipan ko rin uh, maging college instructor din para alam mo yun ma-share din sa iba yung knowledge naman na naipasa sa akin before ng mga professors ko yeah. to answer this question it's really difficult for me because first I'm not from the K-12 program from, uh, I am from the last batch of the uh, basic education curriculum just uh, same with Lance I really want to pursue medicine maybe um, teaching is not for me I was an education student before and I just realized that um, there are still things that you think that it might be for you, but it is. There are things that we uh, thought that it's not for us, but it is really for us. Um, that's why when I always say that uh, biology students from the university are coded by God and decoded by nature, it simply means that um, when you are in the biology program, sometimes you don't know your path. Being in a biology student or being in the biology program speaks for itself that there are countless of chances and opportunities ahead of you. Ang meaningful naman ang mga sagot niyo. <laughs> Ako kasi nag-start. Sobrang clueless ko talaga. Like, hindi ko alam kung anong kukunin kong course. Pero, hindi ko naging first choice yung BS, BS Bio. Kasi hindi, hindi ko alam na may ganong course. I was really aiming for BS Psych. 
And sadly, wala nang slot ng BS Psych sa Dubsu. Kaya feeling ko yung question para sa akin dito, eh, bakit ako nag-stay kung ayaw ko naman ng bio? Kung hindi ko naman alam yung bio. Eh, gusto ko talaga maging doktor. Yun talaga. Kaya, bio is a preparatory for course for medicine. Kaya, yun na lang. Yun na lang yung nagpa-stay talaga sa akin na kapag may enough na financial resources talaga, magpa-proceed talaga ako ng medicine. Kasi, pakiramdam ko, it's medicine or nothing. Um, I do agree with ano no with Carl na parang um, sometimes we feel like um yung yung akala mong para sa is hindi pala siya para sa yo. Um honestly, hinanakit reveal. Um I'm not actually looking forward or looking up to myself as becoming a doctor someday because honestly my real dream is to become a, a teacher. I really want to become a teacher like ano oh, yun nga yung reason kung bakit hindi ako takot na kapag hindi ka ma-pursue yung medicine because it is just a dream that I found out. Uh, recently lang hindi siya like childhood dream uh, yun, pero yung pagiging teacher para siya sa akin na parang gusto ko talaga siya na parang yun talaga yung gusto ko kaso lang yung iniisip ko rin is nandito na ako eh so why not try to push it so yun parang ayoko lang talaga magkaroon ng regret in the future pero hopefully i'm not wasting my time ano it's the same with me no one of the reasons why i am slightly hesitant to proceed to medicine is the financial needs na kailangan for pursuing med kasi hindi lang siya joke no Tsaka hindi lang kasi yung pera yung ano yung puhunan mo pati yung oras mo kasi it's gonna be another long journey. Yeah, so continuing on, uh, now for Carl. Uh, what made you choose Dubsu and like what was it your dream school? When we speak of our dream schools, not the sugar code. When we speak of dream schools, you have to really dream big. Uh, Dubsu is not my dream school. I have to be honest. My dream school is of course Harvard, Liva. Anyone dreams of being a Harvard student. What led me to that so is really quite interesting because I made mention that I'm from the basic education curriculum. I took three years of a uh, BS Ed major in biological science prior to BS biology. Do the math. Three, then plus four, that's seven years of pre-medicine. I studied uh, BS Ed in Columban College in Olongapo City because I'm not a Kapampangan. Um, you're from Zambal and then you reach Pampanga. It's because Dabsu has the free tertiary education. And this um, reminds everyone that they don't have to pursue their dreams in their dream schools if it takes a lot of financial concerns and if um, they are experiencing uh, financial instability. We have to be wise in choosing our schools and into reaching our dreams. Do not be afraid of uh, not entering your dream school. Because remember, your dream school will not pave your path in the future what will happen is that you yourself will pave your own path for you to reach that dream and any school will help you achieve your dreams na mention na to kay Lance na senior high school kasi sa Kalibo ako nag senior high school tapos yung mga kaklase ko pinag-uusapan talaga nila yung college pag kusang sila magka-college siya maganda daw sa West maganda daw sa UP sa Iloilo ganyan eh clueless naman ako kasi nga ano ba naman <laughs> parang ganon tinry ko talaga Parang pinili ko, okay, sa UP ako mag-aaral. <laughs> oh, pinili ko talaga yun, no? Tapos, nag-try akong mag-upcut. Nag-take ako ng upcut sa Iloilo. Pero hindi ako pumasa. Nung nag-take pa naman ako ng upcut, feeling ko, ay, para sa akin to. I'm gonna be a city girl. Parang ganun, pero, eh, hindi pumasa. <laughs> so, ayo namuwi na lang ako dito sa Pampanga. Tapos, nag-try ako mag-apply sa isang private university dito sa Angeles, which is yung... Holy Angel University. Pero because of um, unforeseen circumstances, hindi ako natuloy. Pero nakapasa naman ako exam kasi hindi talaga ako natuloy. Luckily, kahit um, one month na lang bago mag-start yung classes, pumasyal ako sa Dubsu. So, nag-apply ako. That's how I end up here. Pinili ko rin yung Dubsu kasi malapit siya sa amin. Na nag-offer ng magandang courses. Choose Dubsu. Kumbaga yun yung yun yung naging bagong pintuan para sa akin kasi before pa lang yung naging 13 year old na 6 footer na ako talagang pinangarap ko na talaga maglalaro ako sa Maynila maglalaro ako sa Maynila maglalaro ako sa Maynila yun lang kaso along the way nag grade 8 nagkaroon ako ng mga offers pero hindi ko tinatanggap kasi takot yun yung pinaka isang pangit na bagay siguro sa buhay ko yung takot na yun inaloko yung Dubsu kumaga inaloko yung sarili ko sa Dubsu na eto bagong bagong path na to bagong journey na to ng buhay ko uh, eto pag pinasukan ko na to Oh, hindi na ako lalabas dito. Kumbaga, lalabas ako dito successful na. Kaya, pinili ko talaga yung school na yon. Tsaka, maganda yung reputation ng school. So, 
same goes with me siguro sa West because as I said, diba, med- medyo bulakbol ako nung high school and I never really imagined myself in West. So parang yung ano, yung nung pumasok ako sa West, sabi ko talaga sa sarili ko is hindi ako aalis ng West na hindi na ako doktor. Like parang ganun yung mentality. Although we never know what will happen and in the future, no. So not Okay, so now let's focus a bit more on the course. So para sa inyo, ano yung pinakamahirap na subject so far? So let's start with Patricia. Um, I have experienced most difficulty with stat bio tsaka analytical chemistry kasi puro computations talaga and I, I admit na mahina ako sa solving. Alam ni Carl tsaka ni Ryder Yana, madalas umiyak ako patago dahil nga solving! Pero advice ko sa future biologists dyan na bago kayo mag-pursue or mag-decide na mag-bio, have a lot of patience talaga tsaka 4 years supply of strong coffee. Kailangan nyo talaga yan. <laughs> Ako walang specific na subject. Para sa akin kapag yung concept is may process na pinag-uusapan, yun yung pinaka feeling ko nahihirapan talaga ako. Which is pag alimbawa may process na kailangan, step by step, kailangan kompleto, alam mo yan. Pero nakakaya naman. For me, um, not the hardest subject, but the hardest reality when you are studying biology. Uh, hindi kasi uso sa atin yung when you're finished with the subject, you can forget it. You're done with the formulas, you're done with the concepts, you're done with the process. It's like a nightmare na you have encountered it last sem tapos dadagdag siya the other sem tapos meron na namang bagong i-introduce let's say for example we were used to say the photosynthesis is just a ano, conversion of light into glucose into sugar so that the plant will start pero nung inintroduce na siya sa cell and molecular biology may mga photosystems na siya nag undergo na siya ng cycle. <laughs> Pagkatapos, papasukan pa nila ng computation. And then, andyan si biochemistry. Naghalo yung bio tsaka chemistry, di ba? So, imagine, not even in biology. I'm hearing stories when I'm watching uh, med students sa TikTok. Pag tinatanong sila anong pinakamahirap na subject for them, they are saying biochemistry. And it's really true. It's biochemistry. Though our instructor there, he is really um, good in the subject because he is a doctor of education. That's why he really guided us. But I will never forget that because I got a zero. Oral exam yun, so nakaharap yung mga klase mo. Tapos, may lumabas na picture, tas akala mo tama yung sagot mo. Tapos, i-rate ka ng prof. Oh, you got 0 over 35. Tapos, mag smile ka na lang na, hindi ka pa pala enough, ganon. Tapos, yung doon naman sa cell and mall bio, he is really a good one of the youngest um, honorary uh, master's recipient sa Ateneo. His major is conservation in environmental science. And all I can say uh, the, to that subject, analy- analytical chemistry, I will not, I will never forget it in my entire um, biology journey. I got a 65, if I'm not mistaken, grade in the midterms. My grade was 65. And then, my final grade was 98. Eh, hindi naman pwede na yung 65 ba disregard. So, I ended up with a final uh, computer grade of 2.0, which is 85. Yun ang pinaka-isang dos sa buong talambuhay ko. Kaya hindi ko siya makakalimutan. Not because the grade is in the mid-range. Kasi, sanay tayo sa uno. We don't, ano, sugarcoat here. Sanay tayo na dapat uno, 1.9, 1.7. We have to accept the reality na in biology, sometimes the subject will not also be in your favor. So, whether you study, whether sabi niya ni Patricia, kahit makailang liters ka ng coffee, kung hindi meant to be kayo nung topic, you have to let it go. Tawang-tawa ko sa ano, you have to let it go yung kung hindi para sa yung topic. So, um, I want to dive in deep in this, ano, this question, ano, kasi based on sa mga stories ninyo, noong nag-talk kami ni Patricia initially, the next day I gave her our list of subjects and I also asked for your list of subjects, ano. As Patricia said na, ano, na like, medyo parang mas deep yung subject namin, like, more specific siya as compared to your program. Um, I think that based on my observation, kasi like, for example, sa inyo yata is general botany. Um, sa amin was botany and then may plant physiology pa kami. So basically, yung tinakal sa botany, hindi na siya itatakal sa 
yung continuity sabi ni ano continuity sabi ni Carl na like um, yung hindi mo pwedeng kalimutan yung subject mo noong last semester kasi for example sa amin nga yung botany namin kailangan naming aralin siya ulit sa plant physiology kasi may mas malaking concept for me ha yung hardest subject i don't know if you would agree kasi based sa nakita ko sa ano sa vlog ni Patricia na enjoy niya yung subject na to which is systematics so yung subject kasi namin sa ano na nagdissect kami ng animals was sa zoology pa lang So we already had an idea about the different na mga phylum groups na ano. We already had representatives for different groups. And then what I what I was amazed with was ano nung sinabi niya na parang enjoyable yung ano yung systematics kasi honestly systematics is my lowest grade. I got a 2.5 in systematics. So yun po yung pinaka lowest kong grade hanggang ngayon, 2.5 sa systematics. And funny thing is I do agree with Carl no na You cannot expect that you will always have good grades or good results sa mga exams kapag biology student ka or any medical course in general. Kasi um, sa systematics namin, we had weekly exams. We had weekly exams which had 100 to 200 items. And the funny thing is, uh, sa zoology kasi, kinover na namin lahat ng phylums. So, chi- parang sobrang chika na to. Pero anyways, gusto ko talagang i-share sa inyo yung struggles na, main struggle namin sa, ano, sa West. We already covered the different phylums sa zoology. So, hindi na namin siya kinover yung phylum, phylum, phylum na ganito sa systematics. We focused on the plants. So, although memorize namin yung animals, we also had exams sa animals na surprise, surprise lang. Pero yung plants talaga, like, pinamemorize sa amin lahat ng phylums ng plants, lahat ng families, and honestly, sa 15 yata or something na exams, na weekly exams, when systematics started, I only passed three exams. Tapos yung tatlong exam na yon, the day before that, nasa party ako, like umiinom and all. Kasi feeling ko, hindi ko na talaga siya kaya. And sabi ko, tutulad ng sabi ni Carl, sabi ko talaga sa sarili ko is, kung hindi para sa akin yung subject o yung topic na lalabas sa exam bukas, kahit anong review ko, hindi ko siya masasagutan. So I took the chance to take the party na lang and drink. Actually, yung isang, isang beses nito is umiinom ako habang umiiyak, habang nagre-review ng ano ng plant systematics sa uh, ano sa 7-11. Like ako lang yung estudyante doon na umiiyak habang nagre-review. May nagiiinoman na isang grupo na parang gusto nila akong bigyan ng red horse or something. Kasi yun nga, grabe na yung iyak ko ng time na yun. So yeah, systematics is the hardest subject for us. Wow, ang dami ko na share. <laughs> so anyways, continuing on. So ano naman yung pinaka-favorite nyo or na-enjoy nyo subject so far? So let's have Rydal. Agree ako dun kay sinabi ni Pat sa'yo na yung sa vlog niya is about the systematic which is ano siguro na-enjoy ko lang hindi kasi lahat naman parang hindi ko ma-enjoy eh pero uh, na-enjoy ka lang kasi ano ang daming activities na ginawa dun like nagdadisect ng mga ganon like nagdisect kami ng isda ng, ng chicken ng ganon so yun so yung pin-enjoy ka lang kapag may mga activities na ganon kasi Parang para sa akin yun na yung pahinga. Ito, wala muna tayong isasaksak sa utak nyo na concept na ganito na gagawin nyo na yan. So, ayun, para sa akin, yun yung pinaka nag-enjoy ako kung i-rate ko man sila. Um, not my favorite, pero pinaka-memorable, zoology. Kasi, um, nung first year ako, hindi kami magkakaklase nila Rydel at ni Patricia. What happened is nagkaroon ng shuffling nung second year kasi sobrang daming naalis sa program at sobrang daming umalis. Dahil hindi nila in-expect na ganun siya kahirap. Kasi ang ginagawa nila kapag wala ng mapasukan na program sa university, minsan dinadala nila sa bio. Eh akala nila, biology, magsasaulo ka lang dyan. Eh here comes the moving exam. Eh di ba yung, yun ang hindi na, e, ano, na e-experience ng mga students in the online platform the online learning moving exam it's like your you have stations stations of the cross siya talaga papuntang kalbaryo ng mga ano biology student so what will happen is let, let's say in the uh, you have a topic histology kasi hindi ko makakalimutan yung movement exam na yon histology ay galit yung prof nun kasi yung quizzes namin before that sobrang baba And then morning yung klase niya, 7.30. Nagtataka kami kung bakit yung mga tables kasi namin sa lab, flat lang siya. Para kapag may moving exam, accessible siya. Ngayon, what happened is, alam mo kasi yung pakiramdam kapag may moving exam. Distributed lahat ng microscope. So, magtataka ka kung bakit hindi pa kami nakapasok. Nakasaksak na yung mga microscope pagkatapos may mga slides na. Tapos, yung bell niya nasa harapan niya. 
So, di ba, usually sa librarians lang natin nakikita yung bell na yun. Pero siya may sarili siyang bell. And then, syempre, nagpanik kami. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most difficult um, subtopics kasi sa syllabus ng zoology. Histology talaga. Kasi yung akala mong kamukha nung doon sa testicular tissue, hindi naman pala siya yun. O ba yan pala siya? Parang ganun. And then what happened is that, um, parang out of 90 students, ang bumagsak doon, 80. So, buong department yun. I'm so very happy kasi I'm one of the students who aced the exam. And when you say ace, nakalahate, umabot sa kalahate. So, my score was 17 over 35. After that, I already made up my mind that I will be ano, into the medical aspect of biology. Kasi biology has a lot of aspects. It has the environmental aspect, molecular aspect, cellular aspect. I'm more of in a human biology aspect kasi doon talaga ako nag Doon ako nag-grow. Kasi kapag pinasukan mo na ako ng concepts ng biophysics saka ng chemistry, siguro wag na lang tayong mag-usap. I-add ko lang sa sinabi ni Carl sa movie exam namin. Hindi ko sure kung pang ilang movie exam na namin yung sa histology na yon Hindi hindi lang 80 yung bumagsak. Parang apat lang yata yung bumasa. Apat lang na yata magpumasa sa magkabilang section ha, sa magkabilang section. Grabe, ganun, ganun kahira, parang shocking. Parang paisip nga rin ako nun na para dito ba ako, mag-shift na kaya ako habang maaga. Parang ganun. Pero so far, ito, nakaabot naman na ng magpo-fourth year na. So, para dito siguro ako. <laughs> For Carl. So, in WVSU, we have three programs. So, sa biology, mayroong biotechnology, which focuses on bioinformatics, genetics, and laboratory techniques. Uh, we also have medical biology, which focuses on preparing students with fundamental knowledge for when they pursue medicine. And microbiology, which focuses on equipping students with skills they need in pursuing microbiology in the field of quality assurance and food microbiology. So based on my information gathered, so nag-research po tayo ng kaunti, ano? Davso is yet to have their tracking program. If given the chance, maybe in the future, what tracks or major would you want to be offered to future biology students in your university? Oh, this is a tough question. Feeling ko da parang sumagot ata nito yung chairperson namin. Pero, yun. Um, for me, uh, hindi ka nag-iisa kasi kami na mga sudyante ng Dubso, nagsisearch naman kami kung anong meron dun sa mga other programs. And honestly, ang pinakabilib ako na mga majors is sa UPLB. Kasi sa UPLB, meron silang majors like Cell and Molecular Biology, Computational Genetics, meron silang major in Botany, major in Zoology. Basta kumpleto, lahat ata ng ma-imagine mo na pwedeng i-major ng isang BS Bio nando doon. Pero for me, uh, Dabso should start with uh, those uh, majors na sa tingin ko uh, essential. Like Zoology, Botany, Genetics, we have Marine Biology, Conservation Biology, which is very important. Kasi, um, honestly, yung pag may major sa undergrad, it contains you. Like, when you majored in zoology, during your master's, you have to take something related in zoology. You cannot pursue plant genetics. Or maybe you can because may mga bridging program. Pero yung foundation mo kasi, uh, kumbaga pinatatag sa zoology. Um, also, with this majoring, I don't know if familiar yung mga nanonood we have a certifying exam for microbiologists in the Philippines given by the Th- Philippine Society of Microbiology uh, you can be a registered microbiologist or what we so, so called R micro if you have met the requirements for microbiology courses if you are an undergrad majoring in microbiology so you don't have to take a certification. Kasi sa case namin, mga bio, general biology, if you want to take the exam for the microbiology certification, we have to enroll in another school who specializes in microbiology. And for that case, the one who gives certifications are in the UP system. So UP Diliman, UP Los Banos, they are giving the certification. This is an advantage if a uh, university offering biology really offers for um, specific fields of specialization. Ang sarap sa feeling, no? Bachelor of Science in Microbiology 
ay Bachelor of Science in Biology with specialization in cell and molecular biology. Diba? Binabagsak lang ng ibang estudyante ng isang beses, tapos ikaw pinag-aralan mo ng ilang taon. So, sobrang fulfilling nun sa part as a bio, bio, bio student. Uh, actually, sa, in terms of microbiology sa West, no, like sabi ni Carl, ano, there is the certification program for microbiologists in the Philippines na binibigay ito ng PAM or something. But anyways, yung point ko here is, yung sabi ni, ni Carl na ano, you can take uh, microbiology like in other schools kung hindi siya na-offer sa school ninyo, like certification program sa, sa UPLB. Um, actually, West Side State o- started to offer that program. No? Like, for example, graduate ka sa school na wala kang tracking, you can take microbiology sa West for 21 units, which is the required ng PAM for you to take the exam. So, yeah, so basically ngayon may mga students kami na like graduate sila ng medical biology kasi lang nag-change of heart, hindi nag ano, nag-pursue ng medicine, gusto mag-pursue ng microbiology. So, they went back to study microbiology. So, may mga classmates yung microbiology namin na mga uh, mga researcher na or may master's degree na ngayong iba eh. So, yeah, it's really amazing, ano. And agree talaga ako kay Carl na like super complete sa UPLB ng mga ano ng tracking, like super amazed with it. And also yung Ateneo, I saw this vlog, Sir Marco Malil- Malilan or something, na sinabi niya doon yung mga, uh, sa Ateneo daw, they can choose the subjects that they want to take. Like electives na lang nila yung mga, ano, mga urinology or hepatology, like isang, isang, isa or talawang subjects na elective nila other than their track. So yeah, I think that it really offers more choices. Kaso lang yun nga, sabi, sabi rin ni Carl kanina, it may also leave you uh, grounded to a specific track or hindi siya like super wide yung field mo. Nung first year kasi ako, talagang I was a clueless college student. Hindi ko naman alam na may mga major major. Tapos nung first year ako for STEM, may nagtanong sa akin, "Pa't nung major mo?" Tapos hindi ko alam ano yung sasagot ko. Eh alam ko ang major subjects ko noon were zoology, uh, botany. Yun ba yung sasagot ko? Yun ba yung major ko? Parang ganoon yung nasa isip ko noon. Pero syempre, tumagala ko sa bio na na figure out ko rin yung major major ng ganyan and wala kami wala kami wala kami yun sa dabso pero if given the chance gusto ko talaga mag-establish establish sana ng uh, med bio kasi mostly sa mga sa mga nag-apply talaga or nagpo-pursue ng BS bio sa dabso pag tinanong mo bakit ka nag BS bio kasi gusto ko maging doktor kaya yon kaya sana magkaroon ng um, major na med bio sa sa Dabsu. Also, alam ko imposible to kasi malayo kami sa mga dagat-dagatan. Sana magkamarin bio kasi nalaman ko sa ASU, ASU New Wash yata, nag-offer sila ng marin bio para nakaka-enganyo, nakaka-enganyo mag-aral ng marin bio. Uh, ako, ako agree ako dun sa ano, dun sa med bio kasi parang para sa akin, ano, essential talaga siya dahil nasa panahon ngayon na kailangan natin ng mga mga tao talaga in medical allied field. So, para sa akin yun yung yun yung siguro kung one someday na magkakaroon ng specializations dito sa Dabso. Yun talaga yung isa sa mga naiisip kong sana magkaroon. Yes, no. Um hopefully is ano in some time near ay eh, magkaroon na nga ano. Um not to discourage other people no sa West or Um, it's reality talaga sa amin sa Wasisaya State University na hindi lahat ng nagkukuha ng medical biology na course or track will really proceed to medicine. That was something that was really uh, implied to us when we were choosing our track. No? Like, don't expect na makakaaral ka daw sa medicine and that kasi um, they wouldn't want us to choose a track na hindi kami mag- magbe-benefit at the end. So I think that is, it is also the advantage of biology programs na generalized kasi um, that way, hindi lang sila umaasa sa isang track, like hindi lang sila nakafocus sa ganitong track or sa medical biology for example, kasi paano kung hindi nga sila makaproceed sa medicine, like uh, sayang naman yung pinag-aralan nilang specialization, if ever. Kasi naman, uh, masabuti na sana na nag, ano siya, naging generalized siya, at least mas exposed siya sa different fields kesa sa isang field lang. So anyways, continuing on, I just want to ask, you know, What is your favorite part of being a biology student? So, is it the laboratory works, the long lectures, or readings, or ano pa man? So, Patricia? Hmm, para sa akin, the best part of being a BS Bio student ay eh, nangyari nung face-to-face classes pa. Kasi, dun yung mga lab works, tsaka yung mga moving exam. Though, syempre, nakakaginig ng kalam na ng moving exam. Pero, parang, parang napipilin mo sa sarili mo na, oh, 
what a time to be alive, parang ganon yung yung feeling ng moving exam. Tapos, yung lab works talaga, minensin ko nga na, yun yung parang feeling ko, it, ito yung essence ng pagiging isang bio student. <laughs> ganon. Tsaka kasi in general, um, yung bio kasi hands-on learning. Or parang, you learn by doing, ganon. You learn by using the principles of bio na pinag-aralan mo by applying them. Kaya the best part talaga ay eh, yung face-to-face classes. Ako siguro aside sa mga lab works nga na syempre kasi ano, yun yung activities talaga na yung kumbaga iba, iba hindi siya yung magsasaksak lang kayo, magsasaksak tayo sa utak mo ng iba't ibang concept. Ano? Ah uh, siguro isa sa pinaka magandang experience sa pagiging bio student yung nakaka-discover ka ng iba't ibang bagay tungkol sa buhay like ah ganun pala yon, ah ganto pala yon, yung mga ganun na Uh, ma-amaze ka in your own way na, na noon hindi ko to alam. Siguro kung hindi ako nag-bio, hindi ko to malalaman kahit hanggang mamatay ako yung mga ganon na mga konsepto. Yun, yun talaga yung isa sa pinaka-favorite ko as a bio student. Uh, I think uh, mag-a-agree itong dalawa dito. It's not my favorite pero I find it weird. Bakit kailangan pang ipa-drawing sa iyo yung mga structures at saka yung basta sobrang daming drawing. Doon ako naiinis noong ano, noong face to face. Bibili ako ng drawing book no. Tapos yung prof ko magre-react, papa-drawing sa akin yung microscope, tas yung microscope ko daw mukhang snail. Anong magagawa ko? Eh, hindi naman ako marunong mag-drawing talaga. Pero I find it amazing kasi proud na proud ako sa sarili ko pag nagagaya ko yung mga structures sa libro. Kasi akala ko, noong grade school lang ako magbabakat. Umabot ako ng college, nagbabakat pa rin ako. So, yung gawa nung kaklase ko, kukunin ko, then papatong ko yung ano page nung drawing book ko and then kapag di ko na talaga kaya yung structure ibibili ko na siya ng merienda kasi ipapadrawing ko na sa kanya pag di ko na talaga kaya kasi may mga instances like sa botany gagayahin mo kung ano yung nasa picture eh nagreklamo na ako nun kasi yung prof namin doon legendary siya as in legendary siya institution siya ng biology sa Pumpanga Ngayon, sabi ko, sir, pwede bang mag-print na lang ako nung... Kasi, nagpi- ba diba, ang hirap mag-focus ng lens ng back cam mo dun sa may microscope? Kapag yung microscope nyo, wala namang built-in camera. So, depipicturan mo yun ngayon. So, meron kang taga-pindot, may taga-hawak ka. Ngayon, nung na-realize ko, nung nag-online classes, puro kami search, puro kami, what, what does the nephrons look like? Eh kung face to face yun, pabibilin kami ng kidney ng anong available sa palengke, tas idadisect mo yun, di ba? Pero sa online learning, wala. And then we had our comparative vertebrae anatomy na inabangan namin. Imagine, first year pa lang kami, tinatanong na namin, anong meron sa comparaana? Tapos pagdating ng comparaana, hindi pala kami makakapag-dissect ng, ng cat. Yes, for those who are watching, biology students undergo a lot of dissections, but we still make it a point that we respect the organisms that we use for dissection. Sometimes we talk to them. Sometimes, yun yung hindi nagagawa kapag online learning. You cannot talk to the rat bago mo siya patulugin. bago mo siya isedate, no? Uh, that is not considered animal cruelty, no? Maybe some of you might be wondering, I don't want to take PS Bio because there's a lot of killings happening, no? We kill in order to understand. There are organisms that is really uh, vast in multiplying, and those organisms are what we are using in experimenting. We are not using those who are protected by the law. Especially, we have ethics, de ba? May ethics kami sinusundan. So, if you really want to pursue BS Bio, I would say that it's, it is not just about laboratory. It's about passion. Kasi kapag maarte ka at hindi matibay ang sikmura mo, pag di mo kayang kumain dun sa tabi nung dissecting pa na nakabuka pa yung anong organism na yun, tas may skyflakes ka kasi gutom ka na dahil bawal lumabas, bawal kumain sa lab, so ang gagawin mo dun ka sa labas na lab ka kanya din babalik ka. So patibayan siya ng sikmura. O kapag matigas ang ulo mo, pag hindi nakatingin yung prof, yung kabilang surgical gloves mo, tanggalin mo. 
Tapos, ilagay mo dun sa packet ng laboratory gown mo yun. Eh, maybe you're not using anything naman dun. You can, you can eat. But we, we honestly have done that even it's prohibited because that's the love of being inside the laboratory. Yun yung hindi mapapantayan ng online class. No matter what you say that there are a lot of resources available in YouTube, no. It cannot fulfill the need that you need to see. You need to touch in order to understand. <laughs> Continuing on, so Rydell, um, we strongly believe kasi na although BS Biology, um, even us no, na medical biology yung track, um, need to be part of the next courses to be considered for face-to-face learning. Because maraming skills sa laboratory na kailangan. So do you think na BS Biology should have, should also be considered to have limited face-to-face classes? I strongly agree to that, no? Kasi iba talaga yung, iba talaga yung laboratory na face-to-face na na experience nyo mismo kaysa sa nakuha nyo lang sa internet yung ganto, napapanood nyo lang. Iba talaga yung na-experience mo, eh. So para sa akin, sana magkaroon, no? kahit limited lang and sana before nilang gawin yon sana mag ano malat sila ng vaccine para sa mga medical allied students lalo na yung mga graduating na kung sakali man kasi yung laboratory iba talaga yon ano iba talaga siya na dapat na experience mo mismo person hindi yung napapanood mo lang ganun actually my perspective here as a council representative i have loved a lot of times sa mga legislative board meetings namin kasi syempre you know the politics in university uh, councils diba you know how powerful the representation is i remember when i asked the question to the uh, chat ro3 in a conference that I have attended recently. We consider other programs vital, like engineering. Engineering architecture should have limited face-to-face as well as IT. Then I asked the question, Mom, how about programs like biology, chemistry, physics that uh, really require requires in-depth studies inside of their laboratories? And then they answered, um, there is a chance that they will um consider but there is no um confirmation yet on a personal perspective um i think that we deserve to have limited face to face but not all not all students maybe the junior and graduating students or in the current situation right now kahit yung graduating student i'll give an example kami may ojt kami after ng SEM na to. So, we ended our SEM last Friday. So, and then we will be having tomorrow the orientation for the OJT. And then we will be having the second semester on September. So, basically, biology is not for the week. Kung ikaw yung tipo na, ano, vacation person, wag kang mag BS Bio kasi, trust me, yung September namin, nakagan chart yun kasi may thesis, di ba? So, basically, wala siyang pahinga. Eh, ang problema, sa thesis, experimental, hindi mo siya pwedeng gawin ng ano, hindi kayo magkakaharap. So, kailangan you'll be performing it in a laboratory. Then, altogether, you will observe the results, di ba? And how would you able to do that? You will set up your own laboratory sa bahay. Magkano ang microscope? Magkano ang incubator? Magkano ang autoclave? You cannot improvise because you will be questioned with the integrity and accuracy of your findings because you did not use the appropriate tools and equipments, de ba? So I think that this serves as a wake-up call to the Commission on Higher Education. Us, um, in the Council, we've been calling and we've been begging that this pandemic really uh, will take for a very long time and we should start progressing. It does not require only um, band-aid solutions. It requires specific targeting and planning for the students. We wouldn't be graduating for mere um, requirements only. Honestly, yung mga interview ko so far, I think na yung mga lessons na na-impart nila sa akin will continue to be there for me or with me uh, in the rest of my journey. No? And 
Also, I'm planning to continue this uh, biology thing na vlogs, interviewing different biology students. I think it will be hard kasi yun nga, sabi ni, ni Carl na ang hirap mag-contact ng mga students na biology na gumagawa ng ganito. Kasi ang hirap kaya mag-film na like uh, you're scared na people will judge you because um, yun nga, may mga animal cruelty daw na laboratory experiments which is not naman talaga. We also observe ethics no in biology and Yeah, yun, yun. I'm planning to continue this and I hope to continue inspiring biology students in the future. So, yeah, for my last question. So, um, personally, biology has opened my eyes to what is really happening in our world. Like how diversity is being lost and climate change has also taken over. And this pushes me to make a difference in this world. So, in the perspective of a future biologist, what is your hope for the future? na mention mo nga yung ano climate change so with the widespread and growing acceptance na climate change is real totoo to so one of the many hopes that i have is that our environment will be a priority kasi ngayon as bio students ha we study and evaluate yung impact ng activities ng tao sa ecosystem so as future biologists i think isa sa mga responsibilidad talaga natin ay yung i-translate natin yung scientific knowledge na meron tayo na napag-aralan natin into social action para matulungan natin mag-adjust yung tao sa environment saka yung environment sa tao para may mangyari, may change. And you see, nowadays kasi, ngayong pandemic ha, mapapansin natin na science is a global practice. Makikita mo, merong mga scientific communities, iba-ibang scientific communities na nagiging collaborative para mag-try to lift ng load na dala nitong coronavirus na to. And yung success stories ng vaccines, it, they also give me hope for the future. As the world awaits for a COVID-free world, I hope for a more stronger or stronger national and global effort para ma-increase yung access natin at yung availability sa vaccines. Tsaka pati na yung affordability din ng vaccines. Nung una, hindi ako aware sa program na to actually. So gusto ko sana in um, the future, mas lumaki pa yung, yung tao na naabot ng program. Yung maraming, mas maraming aware na may gantong program, na ganito yung in-offer nito, na yung variety ng pwede mong matunan, pag-aralan, at pat na i-take is malawak, is marami. So, yun yung gusto ko. Kasi, tulad nga nung sinabi ko, ano, nung una, hindi, ko, hindi ako aware about BS Biology. So, sana in the future, dumami na yung mga katulad ko na maging aware and eventually uh, mag-decide na mag-take nitong program na to kung sakaling gustuhin man nila ayun when i entered bs bio i was an ideal kung ano talaga yung magiging sole purpose ko in the year 2019 i attended the world health organization conference in indonesia it's a uh, model united nations gathering a uh, 2500 students from around the world and enlightening us of what really is the importance of the United Nations Sustainable Development. It's really happy to say that BS Bio targets a lot of enough, the UN SDGs. We have uh, good health and well-being. We have clean water and sanitation, climate action, life on water, life on land, uh, food security. In our institution, our thesis are in line with the UN SDGs. And as an advocate for the UN SDGs, I have already um, experienced speaking in behalf of my institution to other universities such as Adamson University, Far Eastern University. Um, I also have experience enlightening the young people of Angeles City Science High School of what is the UN SDG 13. So it is really important for us to understand that the world is progressing and deteriorating at the same time. It's uh, saddening to say that the people only wants development but not sustainability. And in order to sustain life on Earth, we should have the collective action of making this significant change happen. Let this be a wake-up call to everyone that each individual could make a significant difference in making this a better world to live in. So that ends our episode for today. Naubos na yung questions natin. And would you like to invite them to like your page, support any causes or activities, or any final reminders? So any lang kasi yung tatlo. 
Una, ano, thank you, Lance, kasi binigyan mo kami opportunity na ma-introduce yung BS Bio. At saka yung school namin, ha? Yung Dabsu. And sa lahat ng manonood na to, at nanonood na to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel din. <laughs> Luis Francisco, yun lang. And always remember to keep calm and maintain homeostasis. Ako, ano, I have a small poetry page, FB page siya. Ang pangalan niya is Malayang Panulat. So, ayun. Kung trip niyo yung mga ganong poem, yun. Basta pakibasa. Salamat. I would like to ask everyone who watch this, please follow this, ano, uh, this channel, Lance's channel, um, Patricia's channel, also Rydal's page. And I would like to thank Lance for this opportunity. Um, I would like to thank that you of all the biology students, sabi nga ng prof namin, of all the thousands of students has the opportunity to study life. You are very lucky that you are the chosen one. Um, I would like to remind everyone with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, you can make a difference inside of your home. Always remember that change lies on the hands of the Filipino youth. We should start making a difference and a significant impact for the Filipino youth is coded to conquer. Thank you very much. And this is your Kuya Carl. I would like to say stay safe and be blessed inside of our homes. And um, it's a few days before the end of the registration to vote for the 2022 elections. If you want change in our society, I believe it. it, it starts with us <laughs> yun so anyways thank you so much guys for accepting my invitation i sincerely hope that in the future we can actually meet in person ano? actually i'm really hoping because i had plans before the pandemic to watch the ano, the balloon balloon thingy sa pampanga with my friend from the my student council then <laughs> yeah so stay safe always he follow health protocols and see you next time bye Hey guys, I'm Lance Cabrera and you're listening to The Guest Series. Oh.